Hello and welcome. We're back. Quinny, it's been a minute. Uh, I've been away down under New Zealand and Australia and we'll talk a little bit about that in the episode. But Quinny, how are you doing? It's episode 68. Can you believe it? Of the M Product Podcast. Yeah, I was going to say it has, you know, in the words of the kids, it has been a minute, you know, it's uh, feels like, you know, it was like two weeks you were away for, doesn't it? But equally, three, three, just yeah. over three weeks. So three weeks. Yeah. 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 It's been a, a lot has happened in the world of of end products, Quinny. It's been an absolute monster week for yourself. I've been following uh, everything that's been going on from afar, and what a game week for you on the subject of end products, sir. I'm sure a lot of people who listen and follow you online are more than aware of what's going on. But just in case anyone has missed the past few weeks, let's have a little recap on, uh, particularly uh, this week for you, Quinny. End product has been on the menu. Uh, do you want to fill the listeners in a little bit on what's been going on? Uh, well, <clears throat> I had my first unique win. Sorry, I'm just tweeting out that we're doing the live record, sorry. Um, but yeah, I had my first unique victory uh, this game week. And we were just chatting about it before coming on, but like I did a little goals video for how much I wanted or what I wanted to win throughout the season. And if anyone hasn't seen the video or whatever, I kind of broke my goals into like three little segments. One was uh, like actual players, like cards I want to win. One was like yield, like ROI, and then another one was like a progression kind of stretch kind of thing. And that fell in the form of like winning a unique, you know? So to do that, like fact, you know, the first month of the season, essentially, first like maybe seven game weeks or so. Yeah. Absolutely buzzing. Uh, Cause the great thing about the team is there was like a lot of great, like FC Barcelona, like my cards, you know, like Braze Mendes came in with triple decisive, Yangel Herrera, double decisive, two Celtic cards were in the team as well. And then Skurups came up, my Polish goalkeeper, keeping a clean sheet to Napoli. Uh, it was just a, you know, it was a just a, a famous result in that sense. You know, it was a, it was a, a, it was a memorable one. Even though I didn't get to watch in the games, I was actually away on a, a family vacay for four days uh, to, if anyone knows Scotland, Aberfoyle, and just like there's no, no Wi-Fi or 4G or 2G or anything. You know, <laughs> like there's just that. <laughs> no G. <laughs> so it's like, it was when, and it's one of those guest Wi-Fis where it kicks you off every half an hour. If you know what I mean? So like, it was just, yeah, keeping on top of stuff was just an absolute nightmare. But it's probably a wee bit good as well for sweating the clean sheet out at the end. But yeah, great team result. And that was in 240. So I got the threshold, obviously cantered that in with three players. Like, and I knew I was on for a big game week, you know, if the, if the last two pieces could do well. And uh, yeah, man, the super rare as well, man. Everyone is hyped about the super rare of one. This guy, Jason yeah. Seca, or Seca, under 23 striker looks cool. But the fact that recently I've became number one Girona Super Rare Collector to then win probably the first, I don't even know how many unique for Girona that I will probably have a Savio or something flashy out by now, I think. Mm. Um, but, you know, there's not many Girona uniques. And to get a guy that plays 93% of his L15 and is virtually a mainstay in the squad is one where you're just like, hey, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, I was buzzing. I was actually on um, a flight coming back, um, the the big long flight actually, I think from Melbourne to Doha when the rewards came through and I had Wi-Fi. I'd logged into the Wi-Fi and I thought, I wonder if I can watch YouTube on there. And I got the live stream. I managed to get in a few a few uh, little messages before you opened. And uh, yeah, I was definitely aware of Seca, the player that you picked up the super rare of. He's in my watch list. Um, I didn't end up picking him up. I think I was sort of in the bidding for him a couple of times. And then um, I've since won a few pieces that kind of do the job that I needed him to do in the gallery. But I think he's a great um, pickup for super rare competitions. If you're playing all-star, if you're playing cat modes. Um, and yeah, I think he's probably got another year or two of U23, if I remember rightly. Yeah, so, I think he's like 21, 22 or something. So yeah, yeah. pretty hyped about that. And then the, the other card I won, so it's quite a big result. I almost got double podium. I was sitting third on under 23 mm -hmm. until like uh, the, the last minute I finished sixth for something. And I pulled, uh, but the, the, the thing as well is even for third, I would have got podium payout, which was a couple of bits of ETH, right? Yep. But it would have still been a tier one. It would have still been the same category of card. I've not even went to see what the guy that finished third actually got. Uh, so I wasn't really that bummed about going from third to second. It was just, you know, like I say the money's obviously kicking the stones, but. It wasn't like I was losing out of a star pool, you know, still a tier one pool anyway. So uh, we've got Take Kubo, which oh, yeah. again, really plays into the gallery. I've got Braze obviously there. I've got Oyar Zabalin recently. Tierney transferred there as well. Um, and then like a minute ago, or like just before we came on anyway, I sent some scattergun offers out 
uh, to try and get another player from Sociedad in, and I've just managed to, to pull a nice wee trade off. Um, I've, pu- I've pulled in Zachary Ann, an, uh, an oh, old nice. Zaki. So he's at Sociedad, and I think he's going to, not this weekend, but after this weekend, I think you'll start to see him get minutes. And I watched and a little bit of them, I think, against Real Madrid while I was away. I had the stream up, and the, like Kubo was incredible in that game. The first half, he was absolutely all over, causing all kinds of problems for Real Madrid. Um, and yes, um, Zacharyan came on towards the end. Um, yeah, made himself a bit of a nuisance. I I was keen on him as a player at Dinamo, and I was trying to pick him up pre-season to kind of link him up um, with, I've, I've still got um, Chukovin super rare there. And yeah, he's a player I really like. And I think if he can find his foot in that starting line, it might be a bit difficult to like really stamp his claim this season, but I think he's still, he's still so young. And I think, yeah, if you can pick him up now, he's probably, you know, if he does break into that first team, he could become a real player, but they're a really exciting team to watch. Dad. I've been really uh, impressed with the, f- I've only watched them a handful of times, but, a, a definitely a good watch and uh yeah buzzing for you I f- you know i almost forgot that you won um kubo there he he's a great player to pick up in the game he's still u23 um international of course as well and yeah buzzing for you it was a great game week for you and do you know what not a bad one for me either i didn't i've had like some kind of really spotty results the last few weeks where i've hit some big scores but then you know like a team will be ruined by one really bad yeah. um, performance or a complete DMP. And um, yeah, this weekend I managed to finish in the end, I think 10th for new 23 rare pro um, would have been a lot higher had um, Genk not completely malfunctioned in the first half. Vandervoort letting in three goals, put him way down. Um, and I was really expecting a clean sheet from them this weekend as well. So I was hyped. I think, you know, what? Um, now on the so Red data app, it actually tells you, what you're projected, where it expects you to finish as the game week goes on. And for like two days, it was like projected finish first. So I was like buzzing. I thought, yeah, let's get this gank result out of the way. Um, I was in Perth at the time when that game was playing. And I kind of looked at my phone and, you know, I was right high up in the um, leaderboards when the game started and, and Van der Voort was on 35 points. So, yeah, if he'd have kept a clean sheet, I would have been pretty clear in first place for a little while. And... Uh, yeah, I, I looked at my phone about, about 20 minutes later and it's already like look, had a negative decisive. I was like, oh, that's that's gutting, you know, it's really annoying. But I had a few bad beats in Cap 240, super rare. Similarly, I think um, Cap 240 rare as well. Got involved in M Pen 10's uh, like last man standing. So I was quite, I put quite a good team in for that. Oh, yeah, I'm in that too. Yeah, I, I got check on it. already knocked out because Musiala DMP'd on me and uh, that cost me. Um, you know, the difference between staying in and not staying in. So I lost a threshold, get knocked out of the little side game. Um, but I'll tell you what I did. Uh, so I did actually win um, a decent tier one um, this weekend in that U23 pool. Antonio Nusa, who is a wonder oh, kid. Nice. But yes. we're just waiting to find out how long he's going to be injured because he's missed the last couple of games. He's he's a red cross on so red data. Apparently he's got a back injury, but there's... You know, we're still kind of to be determined how long he's going to be out for. Hopefully it's nothing too serious, but either way, was buzzing to pick up him. Big talent for the future. Years and years of U23 potential ahead of him. So even if he is out for a month or two, you know, I'm not going to be rushing away to go and get that swapped out. I think I'll be more than happy to sit on him until he comes good again. He looks a real player. Um, you know, Norway international, he's... Pretty much looks nailed on to start for Bruges uh, this season. So I'm excited to be able to follow him with a little bit more of a keen interest. So, yeah, that was good. But I also had a random uh, first place win on So Rare Mega a couple of weeks ago. GG's. Yeah, I didn't even realise I'd done it, but I I managed to finish first place of um, the the three-man squad, I think, with a team of Mbappe, Veerman and... Uh, someone else, I forget who it was, but you know, like three of the the three musketeers brought it home, and I managed to uh, pull a, a you get a tier two rare for winning that. So I got a young lad who plays up front for Sturm Graz, a uh, Polish guy. I forget his name. He's got a really tough name to um to to say. It's not the word I was looking for, but it works. Um, and uh, pronounce was the word I was looking for. There we go. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I, I think the last time we were doing the podcast, I was talking about how I was a little bit lacking in that kind of challenger forwards who are nailed on. And in, in the time since we last spoke, I've won him, I've won Noosa, and I also picked up um, another um, nailed on starter for Austria Vienna. So I've now got options there, which really opens up challenger a little bit more for me, especially in that challenger rare, because I had um, rare pro options in like Chukovin and Romani and a few super rares that I've got. But but now I've got some rares um, and yeah, managed to pick up a Grimaldo in the rewards recently as well. So no. I, I've had some end products no. definitely since we last spoke. Um, yeah, good. Good to come back with a bang, Quinny. We're we're well and truly in the mix again, mate. That is right in the mix. Full of end products, this year, boy, on the other end of the world. You know, buzzing to see that. And a lot of good profiles. And you know, the reason uh, that sparked off for me there is uh, chat has been in uh, the, the comments there talking about this kind of Grimaldo versus Frimpong kind of minor debate. I don't know if you've caught it on Sorry Our Data's channel uh, that was going on. I'm firmly in the Frimpong camp. I've won Grimaldo twice, sold him twice, and I've got Frimpong. So I'm definitely in the Frimpong camp on this one. Um, but Grimaldo, fantastic card, of course, and Leverkusen, very, very impressive. But I'm, I'm very firmly, I'd take Frimpong over Grimaldo in my draft mode, in my, in the market or anything, you know, for me personally. But yeah, there's a wee bit of, wee bit of flavour, a wee bit, of, wee bit of bias in that. Yeah. But yeah. Sashi boy, you were in Australia for three weeks. What did you mm. get up to? Well, in terms of like, there's some so rare related activity as well. But obviously, I was, I was working out there, Australia, and, and uh, two weeks in New Zealand and a week in Australia. Um, and I got to visit Queenstown for the first time. Beautiful city. If you ever get the chance to visit in New Zealand, it's like every every corner you turn, there's like incredible views. And yeah, that loved the. I had a few days there. Spent some time in Auckland and Wellington, and also spent some time in Christchurch before hitting Perth, Sydney, Melbourne on a quick bang, bang, bang Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I didn't spend much time apart from in Perth. Didn't spend too much time in the cities in. Uh, in Australia, but I did actually get to meet a legend of the so rare community, Basilbot or Basil P, as he used to be known. Um, I got to link up with him in Wellington. We had a we had lunch, had a beer. I picked his brain about his background, his bot, how it works. Um, you know, because he still plays the game to a pretty high degree as well, and he's got an amazing gallery there. And I was just baffled as to how some of, you know, the, the way that these bots are built, they're really clever. And he was explaining to me that some cards are just like not, you know, there is not an offer that it won't bat away. It will literally just, it, it will keep certain cards because he wants to still play the game. And, but yes, yeah, it's, it's, it was fascinating speaking to him about his, um, his outlook on the so rare platform and how he got into the, making the bot and, yeah just how it's been working as well and he was just showing me things like you know got his so rare app up and just shows me how many kind of like uh how how often he's getting offers on there it's insane i mean in, since he ran his bot i think he had one hundred and thirty thousand completed offers and that's the ones that are completed like he's he had like something like three quarters of a million offers sent and then you know like maybe like one third of those gets accepted eventually wow. but um yeah Good, really good to catch up with him. Always good to have a chinwag with a, a fellow so rare user. But uh, yeah, it was nice to spend an afternoon catching up with him and meeting him. So uh, yeah, if you're locked in, Basil, good to good to uh, see you out in Wellington. Hope you're well. Um, but yeah, it was a great trip. I'm. It was the first time I've been there in over ten years, so the gigs went way better than I expected because I didn't know if people gave a shit about me over there anymore. But yeah, they do. So I'm buzzing. And hey. hopefully I get to go back there again. Hopefully it won't be 10 years till the next time I get out there. But um, but yeah, it, it was it was great. Um, you say you've been on some trips as well, Quinny. Like, how's, how's your uh, last three weeks been uh, outside the world of end products and so rare? Oh, it's just been all family stuff, mate. Nothing I'll bore anyone on, on this podcast with. But I think your adventure is definitely um, a bit more interesting, you know, running around the other side of the world, DJing it up, you know. So, yeah. Uh, is, is Basil's name Basil? It's not. It's not Basil. Ooh, right, okay, I won't ask. What I'm not going to dox him on the uh, podcast, but that was one of the first things I asked him. <laughs> I was like, "Basil's not your real name, is it?" And he was like, "No, it was. Uh, it was named after his one of his pets. So one of his pets was called Basil, and that's 
why he's called Basil on, on So Red. I'm going to guess it's a cat, because I think that's his pet child as well, it was a cat. I think it was a cat, yeah. If I remember rightly, I'm pretty sure he said it was his cat. He's like, gonna be See when his name was, Basil P. I used to think his name was Baslip. <laughs> <laughs> so we seem to used to talk about him. I didn't have a clue what people were on about. And then, I, you know, it wasn't for a while the penny dropped for me. But it's, it, I think it's kind of good in a way for the podcast issue. We've, we, we've been away for like two or three weeks or something like that. And in that time, we've had a lot of stuff happen. Like 3D cards are out. We had the NBA announcement yesterday, which is signaling they're changing scarcity. They're signaling more ETH payouts. We're seeing cash wallets out everywhere. We're seeing monthly leaderboards. There's much more of a... It feels like the season has kicked in now in the mm-hmm. sense of like the game is trying to go kind of mass appeal, trying to go to, you know, this is... Like if you were to open the game up today very active lobby there's lots of stuff going on and it's it feels of that it's presenting itself as being a wee bit more mature now over the last kind of couple of weeks or so um for yourself like being out and about and you know obviously you've not been chained to the computer as much you've not been in your in your own slippers and all that kind of thing uh, for, for the last few weeks <laughs> um you know you know what what, what have you taken uh, on so there over the last couple of weeks how's it been for you what have you been seeing yeah and feeling? i've been it's, I'll tell you what's mad, and like anyone that listens to the podcast who is based down under will probably be able to um, relate to this, but the the time zones of everything over there being very different, and obviously there's different time zones in a lot of the different cities, but um, yeah, like a lot of the games running through the early hours of the night means it's difficult to watch them unless you're up like a complete night owl, right? So... I was getting in from gigs and there's like games like like the, the like thick and fast the games are coming in so um i was definitely still glued to my phone quite a lot but it was like different whereas over here i'm used to waking up and all of like my america results have come in over the weekend over the night or whatever and then i'll wake up and watch a bit of asia football but over there it's like the asia football comes on at night time um and then all of the european football's on through the early hours of the night and then you might wake up and get a, some of the sort of like evening kickoffs or something like that might be, might be, um, might be on the TV. So yeah, it, I've still been very much engaged with everything. Um, obviously it was difficult getting used to the different times that like the day, the deadline was closing, but things like having the so rare data app and like all of the fixtures, like are sort of, they switch to whatever time zone you're in anyway. So I, I wasn't able to like miss I was like, oh, you know, at eight o'clock tonight, there's this game on and there's that game on, which was great. Um, nice. And yeah, I did follow quite a bit of the news. 3D cards, obviously, um, was following the competitions that they were. For, and I, I, I kind of missed the boat there a little bit because I definitely would have had a good opportunity to use um, a 3D card in like a, a kind of picture and um, contest that they were throwing there. I definitely, you know, I went whale watching in Perth. That would have been cool if I could have got one of my 3D cards uh, off the edge of the boat next to a whale sighting or something like that, right? Yeah, um, for sure. Didn't didn't really think that one through, but um, I thought that was quite a nice uh, way to make use of what is essentially, to most of us that play the game, I don't know about you, but I'm not massively, I don't care that like, I can use AR on the cards, but uh, even like Basil took a picture of me next to one of his unique cards while we were in the pub and uh posted that on twitter but i think it's quite that is quite funny i think it'll be like really useful when you can take maybe a picture at the game or if you you know like if you're really lucky and you get to meet one of the players that you own and get a little selfie with them and the card is like floating around that'd be cool be nice to see that start to uh, flick through another thing that i set my alarm for this and again obviously this is a story that a lot of people will be able to relate to but the the new shirt drops on the um on the club shop i was really keen on trying to get my hands on a bundesliga signed shirt just in the hope i maybe land a leverkusen or something like that right and uh i had set my alarm for it was 1 a.m in uh, melbourne at the time and i got on there and i hit go and you know like my all already everything was filled out from the last time i tried to do it i think it automatically filled and i hit send and it must have taken me maybe five six seconds um because it kind of like it just the wheel was just spinning around and spinning around and then it kind of showed up again and then when i hit it again it was like the item sold out and i'm like oh, guides guides but we'll so get there. Instant, isn't it? i'm still stacking the coins who knows like one day they might turn around and be like right hundred thousand coins and you can go and meet zidane and i'll be like well yeah i am sat on a hundred and sixty thousand coins right now i think it's um it's a lot of coins and hopefully you know like i, th- I think the pricing of these 
rewards is 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 great. When I think about it, like I, I reckon, I think what well, thirty five thousand coins, if you can save that up and get yourself a, a signed shirt. Obviously, it's frustrating to not win one, but they can't give them to everyone, right? So there's obviously some frustration from the community, but um, I take that frustration with a pinch of salt because I obviously I've experienced it, but. Like what can you do? They must. How many? I don't know how many they have. Maybe a hundred or something like that. At any given time, you know, there's thousands of users with enough coins to try and win one of those. And yeah, yeah for me, it was like I, I tried the Premier League and I tried the Bundesliga. And um, beyond that, I think like some of the non-signed shirts probably. I think I'd rather win an unsigned like Austrian Bundesliga shirt than a signed one. There's like yeah. certain things that I've, then you can wear that. Yeah, I'm not going to wear a signed shirt, even if it's a club I don't care about. I'm still going to be like, but then I'm not sure I'd want a signed shirt of a club that I don't really care for either. I'd like a signed shirt of a club where it's like, I'll put that in a wall. I'll put that in a frame when I get it. Do you know what I mean? So that, yeah, with the Bundesliga, it's like, you know, a Dortmund, a Leverkusen, a Bayern, uh, you know, a, a Leipzig. There's quite a few clubs that if you won that, I'd be buzzing about it. And if you didn't, then you might be able to, sell it to someone who really wants it or swap it with someone else who got something they didn't want but um yeah someone in the chat ian the, i am the bomb i only called you ian the bomb then uh said that <laughs> I think they've got a pretty nailed on method to get whatever they drop this way so hope it stays like this okay well we want to hear that method oh, it's got a wee bot emoji next to it so i think he's <laughs> I, think, I think that's a tell right uh, yeah sure. that's, that's probably a good a, a good shout actually quinny but uh but yeah, it was a bit gutted, but I'll be definitely keeping a keen eye on that. And I feel confident that I'll get one eventually. But I think that, you know, certain, I'm sure some of these drops will be a lot busier than others. And I think the Bundesliga signed one would have been right up there with some of the busiest. Um, the only hope I've got right now, really, with a lot of these is if they keep coming thick and fast so that people who've already won can't then go in again. Because I think the cool down period's like a month. But I feel like, there's more than a month between them at the moment. So anyone that won last time is straight back in with a chance again. Um, yep. They might have to think about pushing them a bit closer together, like every week or every two weeks, just so that it gives people a chance to win a bit more than, you know, if they're spreading them out like once every six weeks, but the cool down's closed out, then people can jump straight back in. And if I am the bomb is anything to go by, there probably are people out there who know exactly how to, jump the gun on these they're probably in the api doing something or how to snipe it yeah straight in their blockchain on the uh yeah i am the bomb says not a bot so okay not a bot in just direction there maybe but the but my method i think i've went for for caption sign shirts is i went and bought a team and i don't recommend you try this at home economically it's just not probably the best way to go about it but i bought a team to play the premier league special weekly thing where they're doing three weekends and get top 70 and you get a Premier League signed shirt from last season, mm. uh, which could be fun. So top seventy, that, I thought I fancy my chances what, at top seventy. That's not this week, I miss. I must have missed that. Started last weekend is game week one. This weekend is game week two, and then last. Uh, but mm. so I, I would do a giveaway on my channel for those cards, which is why I kind of wanted to do it. If you know what I mean. But I thought if I can win a signed shirt, then I want to try and do it. And it was a kind of nice, easy excuse for me to kind of try it and go for it. And I tried aiming for free games, and let's see how we do over the piece. Of it. I tried doing it on a budget as well. I didn't spend, I think I spent like 160 quid or something on the team, and I've got some good guys in it. Um, but I'd like to see more of this come out over time. The restrictions on this one and the Borussia Dortmund one are not that favourable to, let's say, legacy players, because you need yeah. to be quite active in the market to get some 3Ds in out. 3Ds are not on that high of a serial number. But... You know, I do think like there's so much already on the game that benefit legacy players in that sense, in terms of yeah. uh, you know XP coming into cat modes and monthly leaderboard, a few other bits and bobs. So you know, I think if you're a fan, because again, <clears throat> I've done a giveaway. You were a part of the, uh, the giveaways and stuff like that as well, Stashy boy. You know what it's like. Yeah, you can get people can win tickets, but they don't always take them. You know, so yeah. <laughs> so like having a bit of a barrier to entry to just kind of ensure, I think that the people that receive tickets are you know whatever are actually going to follow through and redeem it, you know, because you want the people that win it to enjoy it. And there's nothing worse than a winner that can't accept it, you know, from the yeah. people that are doing its perspective, in my, in my opinion, at least anyway. Absolutely. I, I'm quite tempted to enter the Dortmund one just because I think it's a great prize. If you can get to one of those games or win a signed shirt, or like that, the prize is brilliant for, you know, 
I was looking at who can you pick up at a reasonable price that might make the difference. And I was looking at cars like Mats Hummels, who I think is like quite good value for money, obviously because of his age, naturally in the market, he's massively undervalued as in, in terms of his output. And, you know, he is pretty nailed at Dortmund, I think, as a starter, at least for now, at least for this next game week where, you know, if you want to use him for this. So I was looking at some of the cards and I was quite tempted to just pick one up because I think this is a good prize, personally. I like the idea. I, I think going to a Dortmund game is right up there for me. It's one of the teams I'd love to go and watch, get in amongst that yellow wall and just... I'm sure the tickets are for their classic as well. Yeah. It's not, it, it's not even it one of the mill. It's, exactly. it's primo. It will be the whole stadium will be absolutely erupting the whole game. So if you want to get to a fixture, it's going to be that one, right? So yeah, I'm I am quite tempted for the first time. I think in any of these specials, the first time I've seen it, I'm like, I might actually buy a card for that because I, if I really wanted to target it with some of my best scoring cards, I think if I had a Dortmund card that was guaranteed or like close to guaranteed to score in like maybe a sixty plus, and I paired that up with some of my best fixtures of the weekend then i'd be right amongst it and yeah you know if i can't sell hummels next week i could probably still make use of him in the midweeks and it wouldn't be the end of the world um taking a little punt there so yeah I'm, i i think with some of these sort of competitions like you said if the barrier to entry is buy a card i don't think that's a potentially a really bad thing i think um if the prize is worth winning, then if the cost of entry is buy a limited or buy a rare, then go for it, right? Um, like you said, if you're talking about the rares, the limited one is the limited one. Obviously, there's going to be hundreds of cards there in the market already snapped up. But in the rares, like you said, some of them might only be that there, there might only be like 300 people on the platform who can even enter that. Yeah. So you're you're in with a one in 300 chance, and I think the top 10 win something like pretty decent right sign shirts tickets to the game go and train with the players like big things not just not just like run of the mill prize like you know it's up there with i guess the ac milan prize um which was another thing i guess that was won since we last spoke as well the uh the kind of code breaking uh thing was done so it'll be interesting to see the content that comes of that because you know, in terms of barrier to entry, like I think that was about as high as it gets. Like you really needed to know what you were doing in the kind of crypto space as much as being a bit of a code breaker, you know, nerding out on really like studying these videos and their tweets and stuff like that. So um, I was surprised how, I mean, they probably weren't because they knew it needed to get one by a certain time, but it, it all happened very quickly, didn't it? That code breaker, it was over and done with very quick before I even had a chance to kind of check in and see where the progress was on it. It was someone had got in there, got the cards. Um, I saw something that someone said that they'd sent the ETH to another wallet so they couldn't move the cards because it had no ETH in it. And they had to send money back to, into it to like move the cards, <laughs> which makes you right. wonder like, is there, is that just a crypto nerd that just doesn't play so rare? They just was more interested in the ETH in there than the NFTs or something. But yeah, that's funny be interesting to see hopefully some content comes out from that we can find out a little bit more about the person that did win it and hopefully find out how they how they cracked it like a little bit about yeah, how cracking the code and all that yeah that'd be good that'd be good production value for content for sure do you know what another thing i want to pick your brain on quinny because i think off air the last time we spoke we were talking about your content and stuff like that and i was saying to you oh you could do and i assume that you've done it so we were saying like you could do a video about how much money can you earn in so rare in a month going through all of your um trying to win the threshold basically really trying to target that threshold obviously now i'm guessing that the last week is this weekend right for that month is that right the yeah. month of the content so you will we'll obviously find out how you actually did in the next few weeks um but obviously now we know that you won some cards in that cat mode competition this game week just gone so i'm really intrigued to see how that came out but um before you get into like the actual crux of it and building that piece of content um do you want to like give it a little hype it up a little bit did you feel like you did well this week this month sorry in terms of nailing those thresholds or were, were there some close calls how did the last month go for you in that sense well i think once we've all had xp come into cat modes we've got captain bonuses and have moved the goalposts up to 280 
we are all kind of at a little bit of a, a rediscovery stage in terms of what cards do we need to actually play in this division to make sure we go over the line. And like, uh, you know, when I was coming into this division, uh, when I was coming into this season before any of that stuff was on the horizon or on the radar of happening, I was thinking about playing Super Rare 240 seriously enough, of course, like I say in the video, like, to, you know, credibly pull an ROI out of it every month. You know, it's a mm. decent chunk of money if you can make it happen often enough. Um, and one of the best ways of doing that is to, like I've done a bunch of times on the channel and stuff like that, but like raise the expectations rather than shooting for 280, try and shoot for cards, you know, try and get a team in there that breaks 350 uh, or, you know, whatever it normally is to get to get a reward in that uh, division. And like, it's, there's not nothing definitive, I would say, about it because like throughout the last month, the things have changed and then it's a wee period of reassessment for, you know, like, oh, well, that, you know, I was let down a few times this month by like an odd DNP or a bunch, a wee bit of underperformance here and there. Uh, but I think it's more like with the cap modes now, like the way I kind of feel it, with the way that All Star's been run, with the bigger prize pots for money, and now the monthly coming in there is like the cards that you get in 240 uh, in, in the cap modes in general, particularly 270. If you look at all the podium payouts in 270, like they're always yeah. good, man. Yeah. They're always good, man. So, um, I think playing in caps is going to give you a totally different experience to playing in these other more competitive divisions, I think, like the regions under 23 All-Star, the monthly. And I see my gallery now, and like not now, it's kind of been forming for a little while, but it's clearly now separating into little sections of cap mode guys and, yeah. uh, you know, scarcity guys and, you know, that, that, you know, different things like that. And I think when it comes to end product, it's good that I think setting goals is a really important part of helping you to track how you're doing, even if it is just how many freshies am I going to hit or can I get into the prizes, you know, can I nail my captain every week or, you know, whatever it is, is quite underused when it comes to like, if you're building a competitive gallery, if you're like a hobbyist or whatever, you're not really, you're just tuning in every week and like throw the teams out, watch the results come in, then, you know, you don't need to bother your, your backside with that. But I think if you are like a competitive player, you're an active player in that sense and like, I'm the person that struggles with goals in the sense like I always just think, well, just try and do as best as you can and get as much as you can. Like that's the goal. Let's just do the best possible, you know. Um, I find it hard to quantify things, but I think sometimes in these games it can help you to just start take a, a basic kind of step. So I think going forward, tracking that is going to be even more important because like winning that that team there that won was fantastic. And I'm even looking at this weekend and thinking I could just roll out the exact same team again. I would need to change yeah. the goalkeeper, but the outfield could stay the same. Uh, and, you know, but then it's like that team smashed like 490 points without the super rare bonus. Wow. So if you had the rare bonus on that 600 points, they would have, they would have caught 20% really? all what? around. What? Really? Yeah. yeah so that's been like 600 points. First place in All-Star with that. The one anything. You know what I mean? And again, it's a kind of similar thing that I've, I've experienced on the channel before is like, if your team comes in, like you could probably win anything. Like if your team really does deliver the way you're thinking, oh, imagine this happened and he's on all the free kicks and yeah. imagine they get the clean sheet and and whatever. Uh, so I wasn't disappointed that I didn't get like a big podium payout or like two cards or, you know, whatever, because I entered that division to get the freshie and then aim for the cards. And I know if I, See, if it wasn't for cat modes, imagine that team was in Challenger and I didn't play it in All-Star or it was in Champion. Or I would be like, oh, should I? Yeah. Oh, I don't, I, you know, and it would have felt somewhat suboptimal. Whereas that just feels like like it was optimal and then it overachieved and actually like brought in like some more. quality cards to, to make up for maybe some deficit I've lost when I have just missed out earlier this month, if that makes sense. So, Yeah. That's how I kind of feel about that. We're all happy with it, yeah. But um, yeah, I think it's it's something that I might really try. I'm trying to think. I think that this time of the year is one of the. It's probably the next month or two is probably like the busiest time of the fixture calendar for pretty much the entire world in terms of like so rare gameplay. If you're a player like me who has a gallery that's spread across all the regions, pretty much, um, this is game time. So I think if I'm really going to try and nail those thresholds for a month. I think October, October, November is the time because you can, you should, you know, if you can kind of like get used to figuring out who is going to play the midweeks versus the weekends, especially for those teams that have 
fixtures in both. I think that's been the trickiest part so far. But by like maybe game week two of the Champions League, Europa League, etc., we can start to see, right, this player is going to be rested for these games and therefore is going to start these games. Um, you know, for me, a good example of that is um, Tony Kroos for Real Madrid. I feel like I can almost, I can almost guess when he's going to play right now. And, you know, like this, so he was rested in the last game. So then people might think, oh, he's going to start this game. But my thinking is that they're going to be looking at using him in the Champions League against Napoli more than this weekend. So I'm expecting Kroos to not start this weekend, but start against Napoli. And it's like, if as you get used to your players, then they become more useful in those cap modes because the weekends that they spend on the bench, their cap scores coming down a little bit, starts to bring yep. it down. And it's like a, a player like Tony Kroos, who, you know, he has an average game, a below average game for him is like 60 points. And he can come off the bench and score 60. He's that involved in, you know, basic stuff not really losing the ball, touching it a lot, getting the odd interception, a quick double-double, maybe a triple-double. He's that guy, you know, he's on the odd set piece. So he's great for me in those sort of cat mode situations where now he's quite heavily rotated in what is probably the best midfield um, in the world, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of selection. Um, and there's a, quite a few players like that. I think when you come into this October, November time of the season, all of us have probably got cards in our galleries where it's like, you know, you can't nail on when they're going to play. But given the next couple of games in the sort of European um, fixture calendar, I think we're all going to start to get a feel for when. And it should be a bit easier to hit without. I think the problem I've had is the DMPs and with a lot of people I know that play the game. We've all been suffering those like unexpected DMPs at the moment. And I think that is down to not finding the rhythm of selection for like a lot of the cards that have been like nailed on for us. Um, you know, like Musiala this week just gone was the one for me where I'm like, he's got to start that game. He didn't, he didn't even come off the bench. So that cost me. And, you know, that given that I'd expect him to probably start against Leipzig this weekend, but then they've got Champions League in the week. It's like, hmm. It's hard to call, hard to call ones like that. But I do feel like we'll get to get a sense of the rhythm. Um, and so, similarly for me, I've got quite a le few Leverkusen cards. Those Thursday night fixtures rolling into the weekends, um, you know, those ones tend to be quite it's quite an obvious rotation. The Thursday fixtures, I find. If they play on the Thursday 90 minutes, chances are they're going to be rested if there's like enough depth in their squad given the next game. There's a few players that obviously have an ex exemption from that, like Verts and, um, you know, the odd, the odd other player they've got, I guess, like Grimaldo is another one in that squad. But, um, yeah, it, I am quite hyped to try and scrape as many um, thresholds in the next month once I find that rhythm. But, um, yeah, I'll be looking forward to seeing your content, Quinny, to see how how you did get on, get the numbers crunched and... Uh, yeah, I'm sure that a lot of people who watch your content will be looking forward for that one as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you say, it's that time of the season we've been waiting for. We had Serie A and League 1 cards come out uh, earlier this week. We've had 3D happen pretty much everywhere. We've still not got Scotland yet. We've still not got mm. uh, maybe if anything's happening in Portugal. We've not seen that yet either. If we got 3D Croatia and we've got Austria, no, we definitely have Austria. I'm not sure about Croatia. Croatia. Yeah, I think we've got Croatia. We have yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got three Croatia, cool. Um, um, it's really, yeah, a few, few of the odd clubs that we're still waiting on. We haven't got Turkey yet, I don't think, have we? It's correct. Turkey. Don't think we've had yeah. them yet. Um, something quite interesting, actually, you mentioned there, like, there's a few clubs we're waiting for as well. I mentioned, obviously, there's not really been any word on what's happening with Juve and Inter this season again. Roma. No PSG. No PSG, which we spoke about a little bit on the podcast, didn't we, when I won the Mbappe? My thinking on like not selling it was partly down to the fact that we don't know if PSG are on the platform next season. And we've had League on cards minted, but no PSG. Um, so, yeah, mm, I wonder if they will feel, so rare that is, will feel the need to um, communicate that to us. Like, do, do, do they have to let us know that these cards are not coming this season or... Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. Um, SR Dimebar saying uh, that Nicolas said that more France and Italy are to come in the next week. So I guess 
those will be those individual. Are we going to get Inter? Are we going to get Juve, Roma, PSG? Um, but yeah, be interesting to see the impact that has on the market for those those players as well. You would hope so. Particularly, like, I always find it odd with Soria that, especially with them being such a big French company and everything like that, league hasn't been sewn up like hmm. long ago. You know, when they started doing league deals and stuff like that, you'd think that would have been easier to do than the Bundesliga or La Liga, certainly, you know. But yeah, because even last season, we didn't have all, even though we had PSG, we still didn't have like all 18 clubs or whatever. We only had like actually 15 or 14 of them or something. Yeah, there was a few missing. Yeah. So even though he says there may be a few, there's going to be a few more Italy and France. It's not an out and out guarantee that it's maybe some Serie B, maybe some Ligue 2, You know, like it might be. You know, it could be. True. It could be That's anything true. at that point. You know, and I think like in terms of what we're chatting about there, in terms of like yield, threshold, cash, experiences, signed shirts, and whatever. If anyone's listening to this podcast, especially that is really what the real end product really gets to of playing this game, like. As well, like I was, we were talking about the unique one earlier as well. But like, there's no like if you're playing this game and you're in it, like there's no like deadline on your season doesn't end, you know, like and it's like you've failed, the game's lost, you've lost all your stuff or whatever. The game just keeps rolling on for as long as you're you're kind of playing it, if that makes sense. And mm. when I'm, you know, I, I was at we kind of point of reflection when I received all those rewards there. They thinking like I can just use all of them. My gallery's built in such a way that it's not that great. My gallery, it's not that deep. When I, I mean, you know, I've got some nice cards and all the rest of it, but it's not like I've got forty goalkeepers and I play teams everywhere and whatever. It's quite lean. So, but it's one of those things where I don't think it's something that um, to go and get wins, especially in those cap modes. It's given enough value in the sense that you need to have you. you it, the, the more kind of agile your gallery is, that if you do get like attacky Kubo. Or you did get a Seca, a Division Two guy you've never heard of, but he's just a killer. Mm. You can utilize him in some way immediately. It's not just about oh, can I sell them in the market? Because sometimes, you know, like the market isn't where you want it to be for the, you know, for you know, so, whatever. Sometimes it's better to use them, isn't it? And yeah. If you're not able to use them, it makes it that's just not an option. Then sometimes you're forced to sell a guy into the market sub, you know, um, suboptimal kind of situation. Yeah. So being like ready to receive rewards is a good place to be in as well where you could oh do you know what i still need a defender a mid i still need a wee bit of something to to kick me up a level but you've got enough to get yourself into the into the three yeah i agree i think um my gallery depth is again like way over and I'm, i always say that oh if i win a card if it kind of improves my like i guess like the ceiling of my gallery then i can start picking away at some of the the bottom pieces and get rid of them but like you said it's quite hard to get rid of some of those rewards or cards when you know if you're in the kind of tier four tier five win um unless that players are nailed on starter it's really it can be really hard to get get rid of them or get use out of them depending on like how big your gallery is but um but yeah i'm in a similar boat i've had a few rewards of late that aren't really of any use to me but you hope that they are of use to someone it's just trying to find the the true value of these things and I, I never like to sell something under what i think it's kind of like peak value is now if it's a player that has not really as has had a bad run of form especially in the limiteds i think limited prices fluctuate so much based on their current form like almost like their l5 rather than their l15 sure. if they have five pretty poor performances their price can drop like 50 percent or more and then peak straight back up when they hit like, you know, their their usual good, you know, if they hit a purple patch. If you look at the price table of any kind of like, especially in the Premier League, I find that there's a lot of chop and change between. And obviously now with collection bonuses and stuff like that, when new cards come out, people are after them quick. And yeah, it's interesting how different I think that limited market is, particularly compared to, say, the rare or super rare where, in super rare you can quite happily sit on a card until it you know gets a nice little l5 of like 55 something like that and go get that in there and i know and there's a few cards in my gallery that i couldn't sell at all for like a season or two i think like one that comes to mind was a reward i won called chris uh, furick who plays in um he's at stuttgart i think and he i think when i won him was not much use to me he was coming to the end of u23 um, but he's really come into his own. They start playing him as a left forward. Uh, he seems to be on set pieces. He's got a fair few goals. His L15 is right up in the kind of high 50s. You know, he's one of them players that, given a good fixture, is like a triple A fixture on steroid data. So he slots in quite nicely into a lot of my cap modes. 
um, that he's been putting up some big scores. And his price now is about three times what I was trying to sell him for about a year ago that no one wanted. No one wanted that. So sometimes, it, you know, if you can't sell them because maybe their scores are not where they are, you just sit on them. If you really don't want to use them or don't really feel the need to keep hold of them, they'll come good and then they might be a bit more used to you or they just might be more valuable to someone else and you can cash in on that that like good run of form. So I think it's not always the end of the day when you win a card that you can't shift because I feel like their day will come. And this is how people like Basil and Pavel really make their money because they even just sit on cards for months and months, years in some cases, right? Red yeah. crosses that turn into blues or turn into, you know, f full capabilities. And yeah, I think if you, if you've got the patience and you've got the gallery that allows you to just sit on cards that are worthless for months and months. And I've definitely got a lot of cards like that in my gallery at the minute. I look at my gallery and there's like, so many you know when you go to do your lineups in so red data and it's just like i've got about 50 forwards but about 30 of them are just like bench or not available and it's like you know so i've actually only got like maybe 10 to 15 that are of any real use to me but i'm sure it does feel like the forward category has really changed over the last year or so it's really became a problem uh position like everyone i speak to has got forward problems you know mm -hmm. of all kinds you know it's not that many, or, you know, there's never that many, but there's very, very few, very little nailed safe, high pick, high yield, optimal forwards, have to have guys yeah. at the minute, you know. Uh, Vinny's back in training. I think he's expected to be back probably for Champions League, maybe the weekend. Yeah. So maybe he kind of resurrects. Also, we know all about Mbappe and everything else that's going on with a few other teams and whatever. But I think, I think you know what I mean, even just throughout general, take away the top teams, just general football, general so rare. There's not that many like strikers. I remember the first season that like, there was every team had a striker that was getting yeah. 15 goals a season. You know, uh, all the top-ish teams in like Belgium or yep. you know these types of places. Whereas now, you know, you look at a lot of these teams and it's like you don't even really know who's starting in a lot of the cases. You know, a lot of them are playing 60 minutes, maybe 80. That guy's mm -hmm. got no AA, but that guy's on the pens and that guy takes the free. You know, and it's it just feels a lot harder to. I think forward is a real problem position nowadays. I'd agree with that definitely for me as well. Um... 100%. And that just like reminded me as well. I think a lot of um I don't know if there's a if there's like a reason for this, but a lot of the good scoring forward cards have lost their forward status. You know, like we had like a flash of like Florian Verts and Jamal Musiala as forwards and then it stopped. And then there was that talk that there was a there's a reason that Saka is not a forward card and it's something to do with like an agreement with Arsenal. Um, yeah. And it's like well, what difference does that make to Arsenal? from a business perspective if anything it would probably push his price higher therefore they'd make more money so i'm not too sure maybe it's something to do with opta i don't know like there's it's very strange but i noticed as well i was looking today or yesterday looking at players who are coming back from injury and one that i'm looking forward to seeing back from injury is uh, nabil fakir at betis right he's been out for a long time expecting he's on the grass expecting to see him back in the next month maybe and he was always an elite forward scorer on the platform when bet especially when betis are in um, form obviously they're going to welcome him back with open arms and i've noticed this quinny his card this season is midfield he's not a forward card this season Ooh. little bit of alpha there for anyone listening but if you are looking to pick up an abel for kia you might want to get one of his old cards versus his new 3d one because this season, he's down as a midfielder for the first time. And then I think that will affect his scores because Betis um, are a bit of a leaky team at the back. Midfielders lose points for every goal that's conceded. And mm -hmm. they also lose more points for possession loss, things like that. And, yeah, you know, players like Fekir are all about those cheeky passes. And he's going to lose the ball. He's going to lose the ball a fair bit. So I think his scores will take a hit on his midfield card. But... So Red Data will be able to tell you if you look at him as a midfielder, I'm sure like he's he won't be the worst, but I still feel like you'd want him as a forward card. But yeah, yeah. another an, another uh, casualty to the uh, forward position there, especially in that elite forward. And I think another thing is like forwards get found out, don't they? And this is another thing. They'll hit form. They'll get they'll have a season or two barring like, you know, like the unicorns out there of your Harry Canes and people like that who are just out and out goal scorers, oh, goal scorers. Yeah. You know they're going to score forever. Harland, like people like that, are going to continue to score. But 
other players that are a little bit cle more clever about their game and their style of play maybe drop a bit deeper they tend to get a bit more found out i find i think they have two or three seasons at the peak and then you know like someone like eden hazard moving to real madrid just didn't didn't work yeah right? and I don't, know, I don't know how i feel about um you know um leon coming under new management italian manager in Cherky's dropped to the bench in the first game. I'm like, hmm, what's going to happen with him now? Uh, is it Cherky season anymore? I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll find out on the weekend. But he's one of those players for this game week that I am not putting into any of my like real the game the lineups where I'm like really confident about the whole lineup. I feel like if he starts, I I feel pretty good about it. But I feel. And from all the reading I've done, I think everyone's got him down as kind of like 50-50, whether he starts or not. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of cards out there like that. I think, you know, one move as well. One move. If you have one good season, you get a big move and you become a rotation player. You know, we've seen it with like Balogun at the moment. And I know that like Alvarez moving from River Plate to Man City. And, you know, Doku looks like he's going to come good at Man City. Um, I think that is one instance where a big move looks like it might actually work out but anyone who's moved to Chelsea has felt the force of that um and yeah I think difficult really difficult because you want to you want a forward who is going to bang every weekend and like unless it is like you said a Vinny uh Mbappe um you know Benzema when he was at Real Madrid um it's hard hard to come by a player like that and there's not many and I think that's why the elite forwards are so expensive on the game and will continue to be so expensive because there's just so few of them now like you said like goal scorers with the aa as well like anyone who can get more than 15 there's not many of them out there um so yeah it's a good point not for sure because i've been going around trying to profile strikers now like so I, i'm kind of like if it is a striker i'm now thinking you can only think of them in the currency of decisive actions you know how many goals is this guy actually going to score this season some guys only score three goals. Some guys yeah. maybe score six. Yeah, you know I mean, well, they get an assist or two. Yeah, maybe they can. Um, and then, like you say, otherwise you're looking for guys with AA that maybe drop deeper. Wingers are probably the the only for unless you've got like a Lewandowski or a Haaland, you've got to mm -hmm. be looking at the Dokus. You've got to be looking at the, the 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 winger types. I think just the guys that have got the take on potential, the balls into the box, attempts at assist possibilities as well. But you know, none of those guys because they're all quite flashy. None of them are under the radar, you know, none of them are hidden, you know, they're quite clearly uh, standing above the parapet. So I do feel the forward position, even now as we're kind of, uh, kind of talking about it, especially in market terms, it's just really moved away, I suppose, from where it used to be, where you could, ah, oh, there's some cheap forwards you can get, they'll get you some DAs, they won't do you AA, but they'll get you some DA, you know, but even those guys are kind of moving away. There's a real dividing line, mm. and that forward line, it's very important to have good forwards now. I think like you mentioned on the wingers as well, there's definitely like a fashion in like current sort of football trends that a lot of people play these wide forwards as like inverted forwards, which means that they're not putting crosses in, they're attempting shots or, you know, they're te attempting a cute pass. There's not many of those sort of like proper wingers left. And the ones that are on so rare are more often than not defender cards that play as wing backs. And those are the guys that are putting in the crosses and losing points for like, you know, incomplete passes. So it's having a knock-on effect all round, but it does mean also that there are a lot of defender cards out there that are pretty much playing as wingers. And, you know, if you get one, if you get a defender card that, you know, I think for me, like I look at cards in my gallery, like Di Lorenzo, who is like a classic fullback type, but has a goal in him as well. Um, some of those elite fullback cards are definitely good to have. Whereas I think a season or two back, they weren't because maybe the way they were getting forward was different. And the, you know, apart from maybe like the Trents and people who really have a pass on them, most fullbacks are just losing the ball constantly. And I find that a lot of my fullback cards are actually scoring better now. And I don't know, if, I don't know if that's just the way that football as a whole is like treating wingbacks, fullbacks a little bit more now. And like they're playing, you know, like the Zinchenko's inverted fullbacks, you know, getting a little bit further into the middle of the field now. Um, you know, losing the ball less, not expected to be putting like crosses in from deep and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I definitely feel that's interesting. I'd love to like, if I was a data scientist, I'd love to like crunch that, have a look at like these forward cards versus like fullbacks this season against like previous ones because 
maybe it's just a fashion as a, it's obviously it's not a so rare or opta thing because people are still scoring the same points for the same things but it definitely feels like there is a trend there forward cards not maybe scoring as much fullbacks are a little bit more solid than they were a few seasons back because I had never have you know put a fullback in one of my main lineups a few seasons back center backs all the way for me but definitely got a few now I think um like Frimpong was mentioned, Grimaldo. Uh, who else have I got? Um, I tell you, like Julian Araujo has been doing really well at Las Palmas. He's been playing oh, yeah. scores. Nice. He's been a he's been a good option for me this season, actually. Considering he's playing at a team that leaks goals, you know, he's not getting many clean sheet um, bonuses, but he's definitely scoring very well all around, even against like Barcelona and teams like that. So, oh yes, he is. It's a good uh, very very well. It's not dropped below fourteen AA this season. Yeah. 18, 22, 21, 26, 14, 30. 80. That is pretty nailed. There now. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty nailed there now. And another one who's come through for me was uh, Juan Luis Sanchez at Sevilla. He, mm. um, you know, like Jesus Navas has been injured for a bit, so he's kind of come in and uh, he's been putting up big scores. He came on off the bench the other day to bang an assist in straight away. Um, young player, highly rated. He's getting a lot of press attention in Spain. So, yeah, I've got a couple of little, nice little fringe options there that look like they could come good. And like I said, they're fullbacks, cards that when I won them at the time were kind of like, hmm, not sure how much use I'm going to get out of that. But now I definitely feel a bit more com confident using these fullbacks in top, top lineups. But um, yeah, mo moving on to the week ahead, how um, how into your kind of team selection have you got for the weekend, Quinny? And what fixtures have caught your eye? Well, I'm kind of so for, for the weekend coming, it's, it's going to be a bit of a hopefully follow up for our big weekend after last one. But there's not that many great fixtures knocking around. And I think this is a game week of really delicate selecting, you know, mm. to try to find the guys that aren't overloaded, maybe. And again, this is a really important, really important game week to look at the coming fixture list because you might look at and again, some teams had midweeks that were SO5 scored. Some teams had midweek games that were not SO5 scored. So once you've done that kind of bit of due diligence, I think this weekend is a really important one to not just look at the immediate game, but the next three. Because if you are trying to think, think about the rotation cycle of some guys who are in and out, sharing minutes, fullbacks, midfielders, whatever it might be, um, the next three games after this weekend, for a lot of teams that play midweeks, European football, is really important. It's like the two, two, two of the most important games for so many teams in their respective group stages. Uh, so that's also a big uh, backdrop of context, I think, into the game week. So I think I don't really have anything I'm that exceptionally buzzing about, but I am going to lean into the unique reward that I've won. I'm going to lean into being an optimistic person, a bit of a hopeful uh, <laughs> a dreamer or whatever. And I'm building my champ Euro teams with the assumption that Girona are going to beat Real Madrid. So I'm just going to assume that, that mm. that's going to happen and think, well, if that happens, they're going to score pretty good and maybe build a team or two with the Girona cards I have. Of course, one of them is a guy that doesn't score more than 40 very often, so <laughs> it's a bit of a stretch. And maybe I'm just looking for an excuse to play him and yeah. give him his debut. But <laughs> uh, again, there's, there's hard games everywhere in my gallery. And I think over the fixture list anyway, there's not many easy games. Bayern are playing Leipzig, for example, and... You know, there's just derbies all over the place and lots of, lots of tough games. I don't think there's many very good ones, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not overly optimistic of anything amazing happening, but I've got a lot of individuals that maybe if, you know, the right chips fall in the right way, I, you know, we'll get yeah. some end product again this week, buddy. What about you? I think, um, I know we've mentioned it here on the podcast before, but again, I think that the main standout fixture for me and my gallery is the Leverkusen one. I think they have a favourable fixture. Um, so I'm going to be leaning into that a little bit. As I kind of got into the builder, I was doing it before um, we came on. I kind of like, I'd, I'd done a lot of team building in the week. I was kind of waiting to see what was going on with Mbappe's injury, but I'm, I'm not going to use him this weekend. I'm expecting him to be rested um, for the game this weekend. And he probably will see him in Newcastle um, in, on Wednesday in the midweek. But um yeah, I had some good options this week. I've got some fixtures that look pretty decent. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at, like, remind myself of 
who I've got in my like Thursday draft. But um, I love the way that we now see like projected kind of like strength of your squad within the kind of context of the division that you're playing it in on server data. Now you get that kind of like score out of a hundred for your lineup. And if I use that as an indicator, I think that it looks like it really likes the look of my all-star rare lineup with a score of 81. Um, nice. It's essentially a champ Euro lineup, but I had a little look at what, you know, that, what kind of scores I need to get in amongst the rewards rather than like trying to, I'm not sure if it's like a match. I'm not sure if it's a game week winning lineup, but I do think that it should win a card if they all start. Um, you know, this is a team that has really high XP across all five. Um, and it, it, the lineup I've got for my all-star rare as it stands is uh, Donnarumma in goal, Di Lorenzo, uh, Paqueta, Takuma Asano and Grimaldo captain. You know, that's four AAA fixtures and one, the Asano one is the only kind of outlier there, which, you know, when it lined up that lineup, it, it, Mbappe is in there. So I'm looking at it as a very strong lineup for Champ if Mbappe's fit. But if he's not, then Asano kind of weakens it a little bit. And I thought in Champ, there's a lot of forward cards who will probably outscore Asano versus, I think the rest of the team's pretty solid with the fixtures, West Ham versus Sheffield United, um, PSG against Claremont Foot. Um, I think Napoli are playing uh, Lecce, I think. You know, good fixtures. Um, Mines are playing against Leverkusen, which is the big one for me this weekend. Um, I think that is a strong lineup. And like we've always said, it's nice to have a team in the all star competitions that can you think can get amongst the cash rewards. So I think I'll be hoping to land in that top, I think it's top 100, isn't it, in all star rare? So yeah, I'm I'm hoping that that is good enough to land in the top hundred, which on paper it definitely is. We just need the fixtures to lie the way that um, they look like they're going to. But again, you know, you mentioned the cap two seventy. Um, the last few weeks I've really been aiming for that, and yeah, this week I think my cap two seventy super rare is my main super rare entry. I've not gone into U twenty three super rare this weekend. I've decided to use my goalkeeper in my kickoff unique and I've put a punt in there of like putting Dylan Levitt in as my unique Um, because I've got four decent super rares there. If Levitt starts, you know, he's been sub, he hasn't played a minute the last couple of games. Um, So yeah, you know, he should get some minutes. My options at unique at the moment are not fantastic. Um, The only two that I've got that are available this weekend are Levitt and um, Ayumu Seko. But Ayumu Seko is constantly underscoring. He's like, his AA is minus nearly every game at the moment, which is crazy. But I actually think that even if Levitt just comes on as a sub for like 20 minutes, he'll outscore Seco for 90. So that's my thinking there. Um, I'm not sure that that has got much chance of winning anything. But, you know, if you've got five players playing in that kickoff tournament that will play, then you're in with a shout. Um, But yeah, cap 270 super rare. Um, I've got Marco Illic at home against um, Austin for Colorado Rapids. Um, Lataro Gianetti against Tigra, uh, Joey Veerman at home against Volendam, captain. That is surely a big scoring game for him. Um, then I've got Ferdi Droif as my forward against uh, Heracles for Zvola, um, hoping that he can get in amongst the decisives. He's another forward who's got quite a decent AA. Um, and then I've got Chris Furek, who I mentioned earlier, triple A fixture for him against Colm or Cologne, as we call them. Um, yeah. I I felt confident about my cap 270 every week, but it's always, I've always had a DMP in it. The last three weeks since I've really been um, targeting it, I've had a DMP. And for some reason, Surrey Data has Furic down as 86% chance of starting. So I'm going to do a little bit more digging into that. I personally don't see why he wouldn't start, but we'll have a look. I'll have to do, get on, get on play sharper and have a look at what, what they reckon there but yeah i think that leverkusen fixture is the obvious big one uh u23 rare pro is pretty strong i've got f- my frimpong and vert in together in that and hope to like make use of them um but yeah it's a bit of a pain now that i've got vert frimpong and odalon kosanu because now i've got grimaldo as well it's like oh it'd be nice if i had yeah there. almost like yeah for me it might be nice to get a Hrdetsky and a and like a you know 
Boniface would be the would be the one, right? That would be. He's the only forward to get one. You can't get it without having Boniface. Like, yeah, I think you could probably do it without the goalkeeper. Hideki's fine, you know, but like goalkeeper correlation, I'm not that mad about it. Like, for example, the weekend Joe Hart gets sent off and my Celtic stack was fine, you know, (laughs) it didn't bother me, (laughs) you know. So, um, so yeah, it's not all it's cracked up to be the goalkeeper element of it all, I think, because yeah, more often than not, it it comes in good, obviously, but just don't. But yeah, I think, um, I, I mean, I've been feeling confident about all my lineups in recent weeks, but like since the European competitions have kicked on, I've I've definitely fallen foul to a few really horrible DMPs or you know like last minute sub appearances with like two touches of the ball and sh- that kind of shit. But fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I, I'm, there's not too many that I'm too concerned about. A few rotations here and there. Um, but fingers crossed, it comes good. Um, and yeah, as I said, I won one reward last weekend, but it was a good one, and Antonio Nusa. And if I can just win, you know, one reward, like a tier one or better across all the lineups, I don't think it's ever like a complete failed weekend. I mean, when you put in like 30 odd lineups together, you would expect more than one reward, right? But I do think it's hard. It's getting harder to win, you know, hitting a 400 and something plus score doesn't always get you better than like a tier three or four in my experience recently, especially in like those all-star pro divisions where they have that monthly competition. I think a lot of people were going heavy in those. Um, How did you get on in that? Actually? I don't, I've had a little look at where my positions are and I'm not that hopeful that I will be anywhere near the rewards in that. But I know Tony was saying he's looking pretty good. Um, Tony's Tony's fighting right in amongst it. I didn't really have a great, you know, it's still a little bit to be, I might get one. I might get one monthly reward. Um, but I've not really had a great month for consistent entries in All Star, All Star Rare Pro mm. or Super Rare. Like throughout the month I've had like I've not had that many goalkeepers every week and there's just been other things going on. So I'm looking forward to it next time. And next time's actually a wee a bone of contention because it's not going to start until after the international break, uh, which some people were upset about. So we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out. But I'm looking forward to it more next month than probably how I've done this time. Yeah. I I think with the international break that we had, that definitely probably made it difficult for a lot of people. I I thought I'd do better than I did. I was surprised. Um I I mean I didn't I didn't fully target those um those divisions that were being covered in the monthly. But if I look at like the leagues and where I'm at currently, I think, you know, I'm probably highest up in the All Star Super, but when I look at the scores, they're not actually good, and I don't see any way into the prize pool there. Um, Rare Pro was probably the one that I had the big score in. I think my biggest score uh, was when I finished tenth, four hundred and forty-eight. Um, this midweek, you know, I'm going to need something massive from Vargas in goal and uh, Jorgen Larsson to that tonight to have any chance of getting anywhere near those um does it end this week or is it next week it ends this week right i think uh yeah i heard people saying it would be next week uh or this week when the midweek but as i'm looking at it then i'm looking at all star rare it's showing my upcoming team for this weekend is being potentially it's just eight game weeks so i think it's this weekend is the final game week oh okay so it looks, like, it looks like the first one was game week 404 so the last one's going to be 411 oh well maybe you know if i if I strike a miracle with uh, some big scores tonight, I might be in with a chance. Maybe on squeezing into that rare pro, I think I'm 331st at the moment. So I'm gonna. I would need this midweek to be massive, and then if the weekend coming is included as well. Um, but yeah, I think it says to September 29th. So I'm assuming it could. That could mean it ends, or it could mean it, that doesn't. Yeah, it's not conclusive, is it? I'm like, what? When that actually ends, but. Yeah, because yeah. the first three game weeks were internationals. That's why I'm looking at my scores and why they're so sucky. Like, yeah. Why am I putting in a team that's got two, is at three game weeks of internationals? Maybe even four? Yeah. I think yeah. that's four. No, it's not. Why Just looking at it now, yeah, you're right. It's so September 29th, game week 411, you can like register for it. So yeah, I think you're right. This this weekend does count towards it. So yeah, if, if these midweeks finish high, then I might be able to squeeze my way in with a really good uh, weekend game week. But yeah, I mean, in rare, 
as it stands, I've got a 383 and a 400. Um, no, nah, this week's not going to score much at all. Like, Ter Stegen scored 23, Barini 53. I've got two players left to play. Well, like, at best, I'm looking at 365 points or something like that. So that's not going to do anything. Um, so I'm not, yeah, I don't think I can do anything in All-Star. Rare, rare pro, maybe I can squeeze something if those two players come good today. But um, the, the the rumor in the chat is that next month it may not be All Star that they do the monthly on or the month long or whatever ever going to use as the terminology, you know? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that Nicola uh, or Nick. No, it wasn't Nicholas. I think it was Paul um, replied to one of McBride's tweets about monthly competitions won't necessarily be All Star next time. So there's been some speculation as to like what that might mean. Would it be cap mode? Would it be something? Else? I feel like it's either going to have to be. It has to be for me. It has to be probably cat mode, or yeah, it's probably it, they're not going to. Surely they wouldn't do it in a region where like it would discount quite a lot of people. I don't know. What do you think? Could that be a region, or could it? Or is, are we looking at a cat mode there, or more likely, um, you know, a probably a uh, you know a, a free to play mode. Maybe. I, I don't know. I think maybe something like 270 or 240 could work for sure. Um, I heard uh, Laird talking about it with, I think it was Black last night actually, uh, talking about the difference between it being a 240 and 270. And uh, I don't know, I'll be very interested to see, because I think like All-Star, it's like, it's just the uh, open to all division, isn't it? It doesn't matter what your cards are. But I think maybe the main criticism of it is like the whales have just been flushing it because it's All-Star mm -hmm. rare and rare pro with super rares and all that stuff. Whereas when you get into 270, you do kind of limit them kind of to one superstar in your team. You know, 270, you can't you can't get two big hitters in it. It's just not really possible, you know, unless you've got a cheat code zero, which is very, very rare when that happens. So I think it'd be very interesting if they moved into 270, but then it probably brings money into the cap divisions, which I think they've tried to keep that, I don't know, yeah. maybe down to thresholds. Maybe the 270 monthly could be how much 270 pays you money. I don't know. Maybe 220 would be an interesting one because I feel like 220 is the most liquid that you can kind of like get involved in. It might like ramp up a little bit of interest in the secondary market for players that aren't, you know, you have to really squeeze stuff into that 220, but I think it's accessible because you can use a limited. So maybe 220, you know, people that have limited goalkeepers can then get involved. Um, and so on and so forth. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps 220 could be a good move. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? But I don't know when we can expect to hear from them. I don't think there's been an announcement on like when the next announcement will be. But, you know, we like announcements about announcements, don't we? That's so rare. So hopefully we'll get an announcement about the announcement and we'll be able to announce it on the podcast next week. <laughs> we'll be keeping a keen eye on it anyway. Um, but, yeah, just to close out quickly, uh, you did really mention at the very beginning of the podcast that we had the NBA announcement and we didn't really touch on that but for anyone that is listening that wonders what that was as you mentioned Quinny they have kind of announced that they're going to bring the scarcity volume down in the NBA mints next season to in line with football which is a sensible move in my opinion they had way too many on the supply last season um, and they've also announced that they're going to kind of like bring in cash rewards which I think we were all expecting right because they brought it in on MLB um, okay. I am probably not going to be buying any new cards for NBA this season, but yeah, keen that there might be opportunity to scrape some more ETH rewards with my current collection, which is also seeing a quite nice uptick in its uh, its value at the moment. Obviously, we're only a few weeks away from the NBA season kicking off. So yeah, what about you, Quinny? Are you going to get involved in the NBA? Do you still hold any NBA cards? I've still got my gallery. It's gone up in value, which is nice. And uh, I spent £40 on two cards after the announcement. I just thought, hey, let's go get another couple of year one cards while we can get them. And yeah, yeah we'll throw them into the locker. And yeah, I bought two cards for 40 quid. I don't even know anything about them, but they were on my wee favourites list for when people told me names. I yeah. just looked for two cheap ones that looked kind of okay uh, and done that. So that was all for me. But I'm looking forward to it. Maybe if there's some sort of threshold payment over there, Maybe get a wee gallery that can just go get some basketball thresholds, which would be good fun. And we'll be like end product in multi sporting, which would be cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking now at like, I mean, I don't know. Okay. So I'm looking at my NBA gallery because I haven't really looked at it until just now, actually. And then 
I've noticed a few of my players have got red X's next to them. I'm thinking, oh, have they like retired? Have they come out of? But the red X on NBA, if you kind of hover over it, it says inactive, currently out for an extended period of time. So that is interesting because we only really get that on commons, don't we, in football? Like you get like that little kind of like yellow yeah. uh, marker next to an injured player. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got like, I own 15, or 13 res and 49 limiteds in NBA. Most of them are rewards that I won. Um, so yeah, keen, keen to use that as a bit of a yielding exercise. Fingers crossed I can bring some ETH home and a, and a few more rewards. But um, yeah, keen to see how that plays out. I'm not getting involved in baseball. I um, kind of leave that to the professionals. I don't even put in a limited or sorry, I, I don't even put a common team out in that. I kind of leave it all together. I think it's a bit too too much to think about otherwise. But um but yeah, looking forward to the NBA season. Don't think I'll be investing any new money, but I think I've got some pieces there. Like if there's a cap mode or if there's, you know, that kind of thing, which you know we saw bits of that last season, then I think i I can compete. So yeah, keen for it. Keen for it. But definitely think, yeah. To summarise, the move, the announcement was positive. I think it's been received very positively from the SoRare community. And yeah, I think it's a sensible move. Cash wallet, all that stuff, you know, opens the game up to a much broader audience. And fingers crossed, they see a nice little boom at the beginning of the next season, um, you know, leading into the hype of that opening uh, round of games. I'm sure they will. I'm sure we'll see some marketing ramp up because product feels ready. You know, I think that a lot of people are, who follow NBA are used to fantasy sports, daily fantasy sports, that kind of thing. And this definitely, you know, if anyone plays daily fantasy sports on NBA, this is pretty much the same thing now. Now that you've introduced Cash Wallet and that kind of thing, it's like you're going head to head with the big guns in that world. And, you know, they've got the licenses, they've got the uh, partnerships. I think they can go for it now. What do you reckon? Yeah. For sure. I think I bet the NBA hype could, uh, could definitely hit home this year. So, yeah, I'm excited to see it from a distance. Hopefully it comes off for us. But, yeah. Nice. Well, uh, yeah, I think we covered just about everything. It's a pleasure hanging out with you again, Quinny, and all of the listeners, as usual, on the chat. Um to be back. Yeah, it's been good, mate. And, yeah, I'll be looking forward to, uh, hopefully, some more end product on the weekend. And good luck to everyone playing. Uh, fingers crossed the... Uh, you'll hit those rewards and those thresholds and we'll all be back this time next week feeling a little bit richer um quinny That's it. always a pleasure never a chore <laughs> love it <laughs> uh yeah and good luck everyone make sure that you like subscribe comment share all of that stuff you know what's good um and yeah give us a little review on spotify i know we've been putting little questions out there as well quinny if you want to think of a little question to fire in there but it'd be great to get some feedback on there some reviews on spotify always helps and uh, yeah i'm gonna try and like get myself on twitch a little bit more soon as well get uh, the community involved in some side games and giveaways and all that so if you're not already give me a little follow on twitch if you're watching um or even better use your prime sub to give me a sub which is free if you're already subscribed to amazon prime like most people in the world are these days you can um, give me a prime sub at no extra cost to yourself and support the channel but gang it's been an absolute pleasure quinny once again sir have a great weekend and i will see you all next week cheers everyone <laughs>